What a lovely Friday, everyone. Here we are, bringing you the latest update of Azeng News with me, Vanessa. UN Women continue to support Timorese women and girls. Nishita Satyam, the UN Women Head of Mission, said the UN Women continue to support Timorese government to pull star up women and girls issue, such as to end violence against women and girls, empowers women in political and decision making, as well as in human traffic matter on gender-responsive legislation, gender-responsive budgeting, uh, better policies and actions for the women of Timor-Leste. I think we really um, treasure and uh, for her focus on, uh, on a few things, which includes women in leadership. Uh, and of course, she supported uh, our focus on women's economic empowerment through networks, alliances, and cooperation, uh, uh, cooperation uh, amongst the many other things. Satyam added, the UN women keep on supporting the Timorese government to develop the capacity of Timorese women and girls through technical support. Based on the research by Interparliamentary Union concerning the women's participation in the national parliament from 188 nations, Timorese sits on position 25, equivalent of 29.2%. Twelve people dead after explosion at fireworks warehouse in southern Thailand. According to local government officials, the death toll following an explosion at fireworks warehouse in southern Thailand has risen to 12, with over 100 others injured, many of whom are in serious condition. Survivors said they were totally shocked by the unexpected disaster, which shattered their homes and left nothing but debris and grief. <laughs> I stood in shock. My father and my sister were still in the house. I couldn't go inside to help. There were fires and explosions everywhere. At the moment the fire went out, I walked in and saw my siblings-in-law lying in dead. Their bodies burned. My younger sisters and my father's bodies were completely charred. I'm shocked. A local official said the firecrackers ignite a fire afternoon at an authorized warehouse in southern province of Naratiwat, bordering Malaysia. More than 200 houses surrounding the warehouse were damaged by the explosion, affecting more than 360 people. The cause of the incident is being investigated. Rescuers said they continued the efforts to find missing people in the accident. European Union ready to strengthen maritime security cooperation with the Philippines. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen said the European Union was ready to strengthen cooperation with the Philippines on maritime security after a meeting with Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. in Manila. We are ready to strengthen the cooperation with the Philippines on maritime security in the region by sharing information, conducting threat assessment and building a cap the capacity of your national coast watch center and your coast guard against climate change and the philippines is a fulcrum of the geopolitical rivalry between the united states and china with its maritime territory encompassing part of the south china sea a strategic and resource-rich waterway over which china also claims sovereignty the leaders also discussed relaunching negotiations for a free trade agreement and the southeast asian countries energy transition Myanmar military grants Suchi Parchel pardon for five out of multiple offenses. The state media reported that Myanmar's former leader Aung San Suu Kyi will be pardoned for five of the numerous offenses for which she was jailed for a total of 33 years. The Nobel laureate, who last week moved from prison to house arrest in the capital Napidiao, has been in detention since the military seized power in a coup in early 2021. The Gambia has placed before the court an incomplete and misleading factual picture of the situation in Rakhine State in Myanmar. Yet, it is of the utmost importance that the court assess the situation obtaining on the ground in Rakhine dispassionately and accurately. Suchi was sentenced last year to 33 years in a jail for a multitude of offenses, which she denies and is appealing at the Supreme Court. The military seized power after complaining of fraud in a November 2022 general election won by Suu Kyi's party. Election monitoring groups found no evidence of mass fraud. The ruling junta officially postponed an election promised by August this year after its 2021 coup. 
Monsoon rains cause flood in southern Cambodia. Rescuers worked to evacuate local residents in southern Cambodia after two provinces were inundated by floods following monsoon rains. Footage from local broadcaster PNN TV showed a section of a major highway in Sihanoukville province submerged underwater, with authorities utilizing speedboats to transport people and motorcycles to dry land. According to the local district governor, neighboring Kampot province was also affected by floods, with one woman killed and another camper reported missing after their tent was washed away. Local authorities warn people in infected areas to take precautions, with rainfall persisting, evacuate children to higher ground, and stay away from tourist sites. Myanmar junta officially postpones election promised after coup 2021. The state television reported Myanmar's ruling junta has officially postponed an election promised by August this year after its 2021 coup. Junta leader General Min Ohle in a meeting with the Army-backed National Defense and Security Council, NDSC, extended a state of emergency by six more months. The military had pledged to hold elections by August 2023 after it overthrew the elected government headed by Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi, but it cited ongoing violence as a reason to postpone the vote. Myanmar has been in chaos since the coup, with a resistant movement fighting the military on multiple fronts after a bloody crackdown on opponents that saw Western sanctions reimposed. Hong Kong's special administrative region wants to deep economic and trade cooperation with ASEAN countries. John Lee Kachiu, chief executive of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, welcomed ASEAN Enterprises to expand their business in Hong Kong and make good use of Hong Kong's professional services and financing platforms to explore Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area market. Lee is leading a delegation to visit Singapore, Indonesia and Malaysia with the aim of deepening economic and trade cooperation between Hong Kong and ASEAN countries. In fact, Hong Kong and ASEAN countries have a very good foundation for cooperation. I think there's no limit to how far we can go. Hong Kong has many advantages. I think we can use our advantages to serve ASEAN, and ASEAN can make reasonable use of Hong Kong to open up more business opportunities and trade. Lee said, ASEAN is Hong Kong's second largest trading partner at the world's fifth largest economy with strong economic growth momentum and unlimited development potential. Lee said that, as the China-ASEAN trade continues to expand, Hong Kong must seize opportunities to deepen cooperation and economic and trade exchanges with ASEAN and consolidate its role as a window. Japanese and South Korean civic groups rally against nuclear wastewater discharge plan. Japanese and South Korean civic groups gathered in front of the Prime Minister's residence in Tokyo to protest against Japan's decision to discharge nuclear contaminated water from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant into the sea. Some demonstrators said that the Japanese government's promise to dilute the nuclear contaminated water before discharging it into the sea is absurd as it will still damage the marine environment. I think it is a joke to say the nuclear contaminated water is diluted before being discharged. It is the same whether they dilute it or not, as the total amount of radioactive material discharged into the sea will not change. <laughs> Other protesters bemoaned the threat to the all organisms that live and depend on the sea, including future generations, if the discharge plan is carried out. Protesters from the two countries put up placards reading, Korean and Japanese citizens oppose the discharge of nuclear contaminated water into the sea, and the Japanese government should immediately cancel the discharge of nuclear contaminated water into the sea. The rescue team trying to find floods victims by door to door. Rescuers are searching door to door for people trapped in apartments and houses by up to three meter deep flood waters in East China's Fujian province, where Typhoon Doksuri made landfall. Doksuri, the fifth typhoon of this year, made its landfall in coastal areas of Jinjiang, a county level city of Fujian's Quanzhou city, bringing powerful winds and continuous downpours. Local fire department has dispatched a rescue team with various equipment, including speedboat, to evacuate the residents. 
Local rescue team also reached out to these residents and transferred them to safety in a swift action using speedboat. Over 200 residents had been evacuated to safer places, including more than 30 seniors and over 70 children. Typhoon Doksur has affected about 880,000 people in coastal Fujian province, with 363,000 evacuated. It also has caused a direct economic loss of 3,053 billion yuan, or about 427.1 million US dollars. Thank you folks for tuning in today. Have a very nice weekend with loved ones. We will see you all again soon. Bye.